coming. I, I think we're going. I think the wheels are on this train. Anyway, uh, I'm... Ooh, I saw the green screen. The green screen's never good. I, I'm going to unplug that real quick and plug it back in. Just It was like a... Just like a warning shot across my bow, that green screen. But, uh, hey, I'm Jason Brownkowski, and this is Drink the Paint Water. And it's my Monday night live stream every Monday night at 8 p.m. Central. I live, I stream out live across Twitch and Facebook and the Yubtubs to uh, illustrate, to ink an illustration for my upcoming adult coloring book, post-apocalyptic themed coloring book. The working title is ABCs of the Apocalypse, but, you know, if I if something else inspires me later, we, we could get there. But anyway, this is what we do every uh, every Monday night. I've got my trusty, dusty uh, iPad Pro here. I'm using a, a software program called Adobe Fresco, which is a digital drawing program. And uh, Apple Pencil. This crazy-looking bowling glove. That, that's it. That's all it takes. And, you know, a computer and lots of cables and a wing and a prayer. Hey there! Grammy, how are you? All right, so um, I've every week I do a new letter of the alphabet. This week is P for pistols or for flashing screen. It's a P H L A S H I N G. Let's see if we can uh, make this green screen go away. Come on back. Come on back to me. All right. Yeah. Cool. All right, so uh, every week we do a new letter of the alphabet in this. Hey, Celeste. Um, uh, we do a letter of the alphabet. This is P, and this is for pistols. Last week we had O for oopsie, your car ran over a mine. This time is for pistols to stay armed all of the time. You see it, it's a, it's a pun because this man has a lot of arms. He's a mutant because there's been a lot of radiation. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> With no further ado, we're going to switch over here to a vector brush. Get us some black going. Kick this brush size down to, I think, you know, I think nine might be. Because there's a lot of detail this week, like just like there were uh, in some previous weeks. Were, just like there was, just like there were was in some previous weeks. Uh, so I'm going to start off with a, a smaller brush even than I, than I normally do. And we'll see how that goes. So without further ado, the green screen's not happening to us right now. So we're just going to jump into it. So again, I've got a vector brush going at uh, not 18. I don't know why it kicked back up to 18. I want it at about 8. Or 9. 9 is good, too. Boom. All right. And I'm using the G-Pen brush, if you guys are playing along at home. And that is based on, like, manga cartoon brushes. So I, I can't say that I draw manga, but I like the uh, the way the brush acts. We just make these nice straight lines and see how squealy that is. But if I hold it down, I can cheat. Thanks, Janelle. Um, if I if I hold the uh, brush down, I can cheat that a little bit. Excuse me, and um, pop that to a straight line. Although I just think I just kind of messed myself up by making that one line a little bit too short. But we'll worry about that later when we're cutting off the nubs, which is everybody's favorite part of the day. The nub cutting. Yeah, see, even this 8 is looking a little big when I zoom in. But I think we're okay. There's a method to the madness. I um, fluctuated a lot about what I wanted P, what our, our P word to be. Um, I was thinking like putrid or something, or... Petrol, a petrol bombs. I was thinking like Molotov cocktails, but uh, none of those really were shaking me. And I went to bed last night. And I'm like, well, it'll it'll come to me. It always does. And in the middle of the night, it did. Um, I thought pistols. That's an easy one. And not many people know this, but I actually sometimes get paid to draw pistols during my day job. Not like not like draw them, not to brandish them, but to like draw diagrams and different uh, different things like that. So that's cool. I usually try to keep the two a little bit separate, just because, you know, the interwebs being forever and everything. But as long as I don't offend anybody today, I think we'll, I can keep my job tomorrow. You know, but that remains to be seen, whether or not I'll offend anybody. 
And again, the great thing about these digital drawing programs is that I can just zoom right in there. And spin the whole thing around so that it's comfortable for my hands. Now, before I lose track of where I'm going, I'm going to do a little nub cut in here. So the one cool thing, you if you watch me every week, you're going to get sick of hearing this. But one cool thing about Adobe Fresco is that you can just chop off any place where it kind of overlaps a line and makes a nice clean uh, connection there. So that's, oops, <laughs> that one, not so much. Uh, that one didn't work because those two lines don't really overlap. They just intersect. So as Buster Scruggs would say, that's sloppy shooting on my part. So we'll kick back over here to the pen, straighten that line, and then I can chop off both those nubs. Clean this, not that one, clean this uh, back up a little bit. See that one too, they weren't overlapping really. You know, you think after 13 weeks of uh, doing this every Monday, I'd get the hang of it, but all my other time, anytime I'm drawing something digitally, aside from this live stream, I'm using a drawing program called Procreate. Wow. I don't know how Drink the Paint Water is, is chatting that out there to you about my newsletter. It must be my wife hacked my account or something, because... I didn't set that up. That's not one of the bots. That's not one of the friendly robots. So either uh, there's a ghost in the shell or um, or my wife hacked my computer, which is fine. I got no secrets. All right. But you should do what the ghost in the shell says is uh, go to drinkthepaintwater.com forward slash pages forward slash newsletter and uh subscribe to my newsletter i just sent one out today and i'm i'd like to get into a better habit of sending them out but i just had a lot of newsworthy things to talk about today so i thought why not and what are those newsworthy things you might ask well let's uh let's recap this weekend coming up well i was uh, first off i talked about my weekly live streams which i'm glad you're all here thanks for tuning in and if you're tuning in later well thanks for getting here eventually Appreciate it. Um, and then this coming weekend, April 5th through 7th in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, I'll be at the Baird Center. I've had it, I've heard it pronounced Bard Center, but it's B-A-I-R-D, whatever, whatever kind of center downtown um, for Midwest Gaming Classic. It's my first time either attending or uh, showing at that convention. So it should be a good time. Uh, I hear that they have like between twenty five and or twenty five thousand and thirty thousand people in attendance over the weekend. So it should be crazy. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little apprehensive. I'm not really nervous, but like apprehensive. Hopefully, I'll have enough prints and things. Uh, the good news is that it's local, so if we have a really good run on something, I can hypothetically print it out here and have it ready for the next day. I'd rather not do that, because I assume I'll be pretty tired. Pretty tuckered out after a long day of uh, socializing. But if you got it, you got it, right? Hey, Shell. Now, I'm, I'm not going to be able to keep up with the chat, guys, uh, unfortunately. Uh, you're just so, so enthusiastic. I love it. And it's pretty small on my screen. I'm, my eyes are getting old, along with the rest of me. All right, so the, uh, if you're just joining me, um, yeah, Jeff, come on down to MGC. Uh, like I said, I've never been there before, but it should be a good time. If you're, uh, if you're just joining me, this week's letter is P, and that is for pistols. Pistols to keep you well armed in the uh, in the apocalypse, in the radioactive wastelands. And uh, this is kind of my take on a on Rambo. This is like if a knockoff Chinese toy company made a ram like an unlicensed Rambo toy that was called like Bambo or something like that. 
This is uh, Bambo, Lord of the Wastelands. Wasteland Warrior Bambo is what he is. So I want to get his cool 80s action mullet going on. But I purposely didn't like look at a picture of Sly Stallone or anything like that to, to sully this. I just wanted to make him kind of a Rambo-esque character here with a, a bandage on his nose. You know, if I could figure out a way to make the chat show up on my iPad screen, that would be incredible. Although I wouldn't be able to see then what I was drawing. And then, uh, let's see, what else? I've uh, Next weekend, I'll be down in Columbia, Georgia, which was the scene of the very last major battle of the uh, American Civil War. For a fun conference called Creative South. And it's not for work and not for vending or anything like that. I'm just going, I mean, it's, it's for work. It's for networking for my, uh, for myself, not for my day job, but also it's just a good old way to recharge the creative batteries being surrounded by hundreds of other creative types. All right, so we got Bambo here. I'm going to cross this line over a little bit more purposefully so that I can do that nub cutting. All right. So again, one of the major benefits of using a digital drawing program is just to be able to spin this thing around. Sorry if it makes any of you motion sick. I know how that goes. All right, just kind of zoom out to get a kind of an overall idea of what's going on here, you know, and uh, to, time to drink some Wonker's Choice, Grade F, Pig Milk. All right. Now, I, I pictured this as kind of like stubble. But, but when I drew the sketch, it kind of looked like maybe he was wearing a mask, too. So, again, I'll leave that up to whoever's, uh, whoever's coloring this. We had a pretty fun time. Um on Easter at my in-laws house and a lot of the extended family were doing they were coloring some of these sheets from previous weeks uh, you know the, the cleaner ones for what the for what that's worth uh, they were, you know there's maybe about five of the 13 are for mixed company they had a good time and it was it was cool to get some feedback I'll post, uh, we got some photos, so I got, I'll post some photos in a couple days on my socials. For now, I, I felt more important to um, talk about this and the uh, newsletter. Don't want to spam people's inboxes. Boy, I, I signed up on some mailing list the other day, and they've sent me about 10 emails. And texts like that, you know, they've done that recently. Here's an old man. Yeah, the old man yells at cloud. Now here's, I got, you know, what really grinds my gears. Um, <laughs> it's that lately when you, it's not enough to just sign up for the uh, newsletter. Now they make you sign up for the text too. And I always do it thinking, well, that's fine. I'll just, you know, immediately text stop. Uh, but, you know, then sometimes I forget. All right. So these are his. Uh, His dog tags, but let's see where we're going. All right, Jay, you got this. But it is, it was like some kind of fashion thing from an Instagram ad or whatever, because they had a funny pair of swim trunks that I liked that I didn't even actually buy. I just liked it, and so I wanted to get the discount and kind of see what else they had. 
it's funny that you know swim trunks because most of my in-laws don't believe i can swim um but man they've just sent me so many text messages and emails honestly 10 in like the last three days so i don't think they're long for my inbox all right let's get this big bulging neck in there and then i want them to be wearing like the rambo tank top but then also there's pit stains here and some of the feedback i got from a cousin at the uh in-laws easter was that some of my lines didn't connect and he doesn't appreciate having artistic license he if he's coloring something he wants everything lined up and uh box you know boxed in spelled out for him so that's good i mean it's good to have uh feedback everybody's different Here's the uh, absurd Hollywood muscle man balloon biceps. My signature little nubby elbows. Hey, Dave, thanks for tuning in, buddy. It feels like I've made a bunch of lines and haven't gotten anywhere. <laughs> when I was looking at this, I thought, oh, yeah, that's a that's a pretty straightforward drawing. We should uh, be doing okay on that one. But I guess we're getting there. Let me chop off the nubs. I don't know if Ron's here in the chat, but he enjoys the nub chopping part of the program. Get a little snub nose revolver for this guy here. <laughs> That's some uh, some cocaine thumbnail he has there. In the in the aftermath, he's finding the Bolivian nose candy. All right. Now I can't mess up this part because I do love me a good wheel gun. Not too bad that in one line, hey, how about that? All right, I don't know. Let's see here. Got the hammer. It's hammer time. I guess uh, one thing about watching those people actually color some of these uh, past pages is that I want to make sure that I don't get too lost in the detail and that the there are some nice big spaces for people to color in uh, different different types of uh, medium, you know, media. Come on. That's what I get for going off uh, off script here and getting away from the sketch lines. His little, his little Among Us fingers. Oops. It's okay. We'll just cross that one over there and then chop the nubs. Perfect. Not so perfect on that second one. We'll just do one of those. There you go. Little cross hatching. It looks like grip.
All right, cool. Hi there, D. Welcome. <laughs> that it has to be my has to be my wife packed into my account. <laughs> she always likes to say, "I'm married." If any of you have seen the movie uh, Pearl, the horror movie, um, excellent, fantastic movie, and that's easily our favorite line from it. All right, so, you know, the cool thing about having four arms is it gives you four times as many pit stains. So we're going to cap capitalize on that. Just like the uh, the necro dude had that gnarly armpit hair sticking out. This guy, uh, Bambo, he's got um, perspiration problems. But, it's, you know, it's hard to find some right guard when you're dodging red scorpions and everything else. All right. Let's see here. I think uh, as an homage to one of the best movies on Earth, Escape from New York, one of these pistols needs to have an absurd uh, scope on it also, I think. Again, I'm coming off of the sketch. I might be shooting myself in the foot here. But, you know, I'm, I'm here to amuse myself as, as much as I am to amuse you guys. So I'm just going to kind of freehand here uh, an absurd scope. Let's get rid of that other line there. Oops. And we'll make the, the mount later here. This is worthy of the Duke of New York himself. A number one. I guess the, the worst part about drawing a guy with so many arms is that there's so many hands. And <laughs> hands and feet are realistically tough things to draw. Historically tough things to draw is what I meant to say. Um, but it's not so much of a, an issue when you're making something that's cartoony and doesn't have the, the, the best uh, anatomy going for it anyway. Why is this not working? Come on! There we go. I don't know why. I'm trying to do the nub. All right, so get back to the pen. It's double tap and then tap. And that should get rid of the nubs, but it's not. Right, try this again. Double tap. Is that it? Yeah, there we go. I must have just been confusing it with my forceful taps because I too have balloon shaped biceps. Thanks for keeping folks entertained, Janelle. I wish I could uh, keep better track of what's going on in the chat. That always uh, entertains me when I watch uh, one of my favorite musicians, Dave the Bard, give his house concerts, his monthly house concerts from England. And he gets so distracted by the chat that he sometimes forgets the words or, you know, or sits there reading them and, and chatting and forgets to play. Now I feel his pain. Rule number two is a double tap, Rebecca. You know that. Thanks for joining us. Boy, you got a lively crowd here today. I'm, I'm happy to see all of you.
It's a pretty uh, terrible finger, though. So I think I'm gonna. Whoop, didn't mean to do that. I think I'm gonna give this guy the the pinky out because he fancy. That's terrible grip, but it's all good. And then we'll come in here with more kind of cross hatchy lines for the texture on the grip. Nice. I'll just fill that up entirely. All right. I don't know what's going on with this guy's elbow over here, but I like it. All right, and then finally, the last hand. And this one's the easiest one because there's it's a profile. Tap, tap, tap. And we go. Yeah, nice. Again, if you'd like to uh, download the previous weeks, that link right above me up there, drinkthepaintwater.com forward slash ABCs. I just uploaded last week's earlier today. Uh, it's been a pretty busy time over here, and I completely forgot to do it. So sorry about that if you were looking for it before, but it's there now. And that was O for oopsie. Your car ran over a mine. This is a pretty sloppy looking firearm up on the top here. That's okay though. You know, maybe it was uh, warped by the intense heat of a thermonuclear exchange. We don't know. No way of telling. All right, threaded for her satisfaction. Let's see here. My um my hand seems to be hitting the hitting the screen again and causing a little bit of problems. The way it can even though I've got this lovely looking bowling glove on, sometimes uh it picks up the screen picks up my hand through the glove even and tries to draw a line where I was um where I was just resting my hand. Alternatively it like thinks that I'm done with a line before I actually am and makes like a little stagger, like a little dot after a long line of myself, long line of myself, a long line that I've drawn of my own. All right. What do we got here? I do not like this solid line of his face there. I want to get back. That yeah, get that lit, 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 get that back to the uh, kind of stubble. There we go. All right, let's put this uh, aftermarket selector switch on here. It could be a safety, you know. You don't know. And then his ridiculous hammer here. And then he's got another one in a holster, just in case. You know, just in case your four pistols run out of freedom seeds. 
You got to have a backup. Well, it doesn't really. I'm not sure what it reads like right now. Like he's got a baby duckling in a holster. How wholesome. Yeah, it certainly does not read like a pistol in a holster. But that's okay. Yeah, I guess it does now. Now that I zoom out and kind of flop things around a little bit, looks okay. Give him some knuckles here. How about some fur on the back of his hand? Thanks for the reminder, D. Mother and I are going to vote tomorrow. Let's see, I got didn't get close enough to chop off that nub. All right. He's he's looking pretty great here. I'm happy with what's going on, my uh low budget Rambo friend. And then I like to have just these kind of random lines in the background just to break it up. It seemed popular on the other ones. I could actually just draw them all the way through and nub chop them. Nub chop baby. Yeah. Well, look, look at all these nubs that need to be chopped. Excellent. More. Yeah, I forgot to finish this guy's finger. I'm not sure if uh, any of you saw the sketch that I posted. You know, I posted kind of a a time lapse of making this sketch. But I always like looking back at those because it's it's interesting, like how I changed the body, you know, the the body dimensions or the the size of the whole thing, or make this arm bigger, or this time I actually made his head squishier and taller uh, to fill up that space better. It's always, even though I'm the one that drew it, you know, sometimes you're too close to it. You can watch the replay and and figure out exactly what's going on. This guy's got a belt. I don't know if that'll read as a belt buckle, though. But... Let's see. And again, let me... I almost had a tangent. And you know, if you watch these every time, how much I hate tangents. So I, luckily, I... Got rid of that one. And the tangent, if you haven't tuned in, is when two or three lines meet too closely together and it kind of looks janky. Get in here and clean up some of these nubs. And then also make this, this looks like it could be a stink line coming off of his armpit there. I'm going to do that and then just zoom in and cut off the nubs. That's an easy way of, unless you don't get close enough, there you go. Kind of making sure that all connects. Okay, so we've got a pretty good looking, you know, uh, off-brand Rambo here, surviving the post-apocalyptic wastelands. So we're going to go for it. We're going to make this brush bigger. We're going to make it twice as big. We're going to embiggen it. And uh, we'll do 18.5. That's fine. And here we go. We're going to outline these. Oops. Not, not unless we use the right brush. We're not going to. Left arm could use a pit stain. Oh, yep. Thanks, Janelle. Thanks. Good looking out. Okay, I got to re... I got to unembiggen the brush back down to nine. Or eight and a half is fine. T 
to get that quality pit stain action in there, you know? There, perfect. Well, it could be blood. It could be anything. It could be bile. It could be uh, raspberry Diet Coke, you know? It could be anything you want. That's the... It's a beautiful little tree. It's the, the wonder of creating your own art. It's, it can be anything. I'm going to do this here and kind of have that guy flopping over there. All right. Now, now we'll get into the uh, outlining, the outlining of the letters, which for me is the least exciting part of doing this, but uh, necessary evil all the same. But we can use that trick where I just draw a line and hold down the stylus when I get to the end of my line, and it will, well, watch this, whoa, 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 wacky, but it'll give me a nice straight line if I hold it down. So that's pretty cool. Likewise, with a curve, you can kind of do that, and then it'll unslop your curve for you. Kind of nice. And then again, since I'm going to be nub chopping all these, I got to make sure that the where the lines intersect, they um, overlap each other a lot, so that it's easier for me to chop the nubs. I should also be maybe pushing down a little harder on these so that they're nice and bold. Yeah, see? It must I have two gloves on and it's still reading my it's reading my human juice through the gloves. Hey, Ron, I'm glad you're here. I actually, uh, I was saying, you know, I hope you're in the chat because I was cutting a lot of nubs. And I know that's your favorite part. So good. You, you got to the, uh, got to the letter nubs, at least. You missed a bunch of other nubs, though. But that's fine, because, you know, you can, it's the internet, it's forever. You can watch it in perpetuity. All right, that's a little tight there, but uh, we'll we'll see. We'll see where the nub chapin takes us. I guess it's a relatively short word too, you know. I guess I'm just going to have to be more mindful to not drag my big old meat hook on the uh, on the screen because it keeps thinking it keeps picking up like the meaty part of my hand thinking that it's the stylus which Procreate doesn't do that uh, at all so and I you know I, I looked at the settings because I've, I've googled it when, every time I have a problem here and if you've watched this stream more than once you've seen me have some kind of technical problem in fact i had some earlier today uh, but i always google the problem and consult i like to say harness the power of satellites to find my answer and uh i changed some settings that people said would uh would fix it and i don't think it did so we got through the double bag double bag the the glove method and sometimes it works most most of the times it works all right, Ron, we're cutting off these nubs just for you, buddy. Oh, double, double whammy on that guy. Don't get fancy, Jason. Ah, see what happens? Pride go before the fall or something like that. Something got funky with my line there, too. I think um, it was probably another one of those interrupted pen strokes. So once I'm done with the nub machine here, I'll kick it back to a brush and just do a proper full stroke for that. There we go. And see if I can denub it. Nope. 
See, that's the problem. Is that I had already I had already cut off the nubs. Right, let's try that again. So we're gonna renub this. It's a it's a very rare renubbing. As opposed to a denubbing. Alright. We got it. We got it. We're in action now. I don't like how that's kind of doubled there. What's going on? Oh, I'm nervous. Ah. All right. It's staying like that. It's like some crazy Flintstones 60s mid-century hype. <laughs> I'll see you with my nubs. All right. So we got uh, pistolas. You know, I had thought, Shaw, I, I just saw your comment there about a hook hand. And I had, ooh, I had thought that this area in the back looked pretty boring. What if I went off script again and, like, drew some kind of arm back here? That was clearly in the back. And that could be a hook or a claw or something, right? How about a claw? <laughs> Maybe not. All right. Focus. Focus on the nubs. <laughs> no, that's ridiculous. All right, we're gonna redo we're gonna undo all that baloney. Get those stripes back there where they belong. Okay. Sorry about that little detour. I tried. At least you can can say that I tried. All right. So now, um, as most of you, many of you might know, we go around and just outline things that are on the the outside, the the silhouette, just to better different differentiate the um, outline from the detail lines inside, and it just makes it a woo, makes it a far more interesting drawing if you do that. But again, it's doing that little stagger step on me. Um, I had an art teacher in high school one time that was talking about line variation. And the example that he used was if you were walking, you had to paint a mile of fence and you had your brush out and you're just walking straight with the brush at the same height, the same width and everything, it'd be really boring. But if you give it a little, if you give it a little up and down or, you know, push harder and make the, the splotch bigger or, you know, pull it away and make a little less paint on there. It makes it just a infinitely more interesting line, uh, both for the viewer and I think for the person doing it. We'll call them the artiste. Which I thought was a, you know, a great, a great way to think about it. Can't remember what his name was. He was, it wasn't my usual art teacher. It was, I had a, a special program at the Milwaukee Art Museum when I was a senior in high school, back in the olden days. <laughs> and uh, he was the instructor for that, so he wasn't one of our normal high school instructors. He was employed by the by the museum, I assume. Or he was just some street person that came in off, some guy that came in off the street yeah, you know, it would make your your drawings much more much more dynamic. Imagine if you had a mile to paint. I don't think that was the case. It sounds like kind of a career option for me, though. I'll, I'll keep that keep that in my back pocket. All right, we do that old trick where we snap to it, but since I don't have that overlap. The nub cutting wasn't going to work on that one. But you can see kind of what I'm talking about, how his, his arm is much more dynamic than the rest of the uh, details so far. Oh, I've got a spot here that I need to denub. So we're just going to keep doing that. Keep, I don't know what the what the deal is here.
keep just laying my hand out on it and then making that little stutter line. I mean, that is what the deal is. I, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Well, that's the deal. And again, my challenge is always every week. <laughs> you can't, you can't embiggen everything, because then nothing will be emphasized. That is some nice hair. Kind of looks like the poop emoji. I think that was a little bit too exuberant just because it didn't leave a lot of space to color that other piece of hair. So I'm going to undo that guy and move him down just a little bit lower. Yeah, the hardest thing, Ron, about adding extra limbs is just trying to figure out how the, how the connection to the body works. Um, I'm doing a cover for Silver Boulet games for the um for a Neon Lords of the Toxic Wasteland module. And the cover features like this four armed demon with you know just like an armless uh tabard, I guess, going on. And you really have to kind of think about musculature and, and where this stuff's gonna connect. You know, like how how do these arms overlap? If there's enough. Come on. There you go. How do these arms overlap? You know, and what would a shirt like if you would look like if you had four, four uh, arms? And how would you get the pit stains out? You know, these are important questions that we all need to know, have answered. But um, like I was saying earlier, this, as I was struggling to come up with an idea for P, you know, that was family friendly ish, I thought about pistols and I thought, okay, yeah, because it's important to stay armed. And it just lended, it's, lended itself immediately to a, a pun, which, of, you know, is a bonus. You know, I really enjoy working traditionally in ink and paint and, and things like that. But you do have to love being able to undo a line <laughs> if something gets screwed up or work in layers even. to where you, know, you have something going on and it's not at all affecting the artwork underneath it in case you really screw everything up. Then again, you know, somebody said for working carefully and trying not to mess up in the first place. I tell you, it would be a lot more stressful if I was doing, you know, traditional art medium, art media mediums in, uh, in front of everybody. Because there is no undo, double tap to erase the last line you did, you know. Back in 2018, when I was doing live streams uh, pretty much every day there for a little while, that was all traditional media. That was I would sketch it in front of everybody on uh, a little watercolor uh, postcards and then ink right over that and then usually color right over the top of that, just right on the live stream. It's not much room for error. Here, there's a lot more room for error because I do the sketch on my own beforehand. So you don't have to deal with, you know, just kind of ideation, figuring out the relationships of everything. Although I suppose that's interesting too, but we only have so much time, you know, this is a later stream.
All right, and I definitely want to hit his jaw with some bigger lines. Like I, I had envisioned this as a, like a chiseled kind of Sylvester Stallone or um, Kurt Russell kind of jaw, action hero jaw. But I think it looks funny. I think it looks great as it is. I would just kind of oh, like he has no, no chin whatsoever. Make this nice and dark so that if people are coloring in his mouth, they have something to go against. Good night, D. Thanks for jumping in. go just trying to make these lines more interesting There's some nubs that need to be handled. All right, so that guy there. Chop you off. Nice. <clears throat> so pretty soon here, I'm going to be doing more videos. I think I, I probably say that often, don't I? But uh, this time I mean it. Because I have some events coming up, uh, namely one in May called Summerween, which is like a, a summertime Halloween show. Uh, I know I've mentioned it before on the stream, but I need to start cracking and, and get some new artwork together for that one. Um, I've been kind of taking advantage of the fact that I've had some role-playing game commissions lately. And so I've been using those as content for my, um, my bi-weekly Wednesday uh, art videos. The problem with that is that, you know, I don't feel comfortable selling prints of those artworks before the book comes out, you know? Um, nobody has forbidden me to do it, but it just uh, doesn't seem like good uh, sportsmanship. So I really need some new, uh, some new stuff to sell and to engage, excite people with rather than having just the same old stuff. I mean, granted, this Milwaukee Gaming Classic coming up is going to have twenty-five to 30,000 people. So, you know, tens of thousands of people that have never seen my stuff. So it'll all be new to them, to most of them. But I do want new stuff for, you know, for the people that come out and see me more than once a year. And I had, you know, at the end of last year, I had a few weeks in a row there where I was doing presents for, for various people. And that too, you know, it was great for content for my page, but it didn't really uh, give me much that I can use at my art booths. And I'm not complaining in the least. I absolutely love giving gifts of art. Nub. There you go. That guy should connect, right? Should connect better though than he was. Night, Grammy. Thanks for coming.
All right. Let's go. Yeah, I'm zoomed in too close sometimes on this stuff. He says as he zooms in super close on stuff. But I am very excited about the uh, both the Summer Ween show. It's going to be a, a great event, I'm sure. And um, the ideas that Janelle and I came up with for it. She's an invaluable resource for brainstorming. See that that is awful dang close to being a a um tangent right there. Sorry. Brain fart. The <laughs> the tangent where the uh belt meets this this whole area right here. Um real close. There we go. To kind of all just coming together in the same direction. But it's not too bad. Straight line on this guy. All right, and then we'll get the outline of his body. And that's no, not quite where we started. I think we, we've kind of been doing this. Uh, willy-nilly, haven't we? Yeah, because like his, his arms are emphasized, but not uh, not the gun in that one hand. Or this guy here in the, sh in the holster. This is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, good thing. I I just I enjoyed making people laugh. You know, the the whole mission statement of this channel, right, is uh, weird and wonderful with a dash of dark humor. Weird and whim weird and whimsical with a dash of dark humor and a dash of Wonker's choice, pig milk. But um, you know, if I if I crack myself up at least once drawing something, that uh I consider it a success. So hopefully it cracks other people up too. <clears throat> Pretty soon we'll um, hide all these pink sketch lines and see how we're looking. They always kind of reveal maybe where something needs a little bit more work. We'll get there in a second. Just avoid having a tangent over there. It's dangerous doing like a, a long line without lifting up the uh, stylus stall. Because if you goof it up and you undo that line, you gotta undo the whole dang line. I think I did okay there. Let's see, we'll give this guy a little bit. He's old. I just love that this guy's thumbnails are so long. I like to think that they have like a little French. Uh, little French manicure going on. All 
All right, so moment of truth, let's hide the uh, sketch layers. And then you can kind of see where things maybe look a little vacant. Although that's a that's a tough it's a tough trap to fall into because it's supposed to be a little vacant because it's a coloring book. You don't want to have a ton of details and everything. So you gotta uh pick your battles, I think. Um looks to me like this guy's side of his head maybe needs just a little bit more emphasis. Maybe this sleeve down into his armpit. No, that's not that's not bad. I think maybe this armpit entirely. And again, the, the harder I push down on the stylus, the wider the brush goes. So that's pretty cool. Makes it feel like actual physical brushing. All right, yeah, that's looking looking okay. Like I like I said in the past, I'm never happy with or seldom happy with how the words come out in the bottom of these. So before the final book, I might just go through a bunch of these and um and change how the how the words look. Dang it. Um. But for now, I think these are cool, and for the you know the, for the freebie downloads, they're all right. But I might for the book itself, I might just change the um, the typeface entirely uh, to something a little bit more Mad Maxy looking, something more futuristic, or at least a little bit more beat up. But let's see here. We've got a couple of nubs over here that we can take care of. That little dude and this little guy. I overall don't like this big line here, so I'm just going to get rid of it. And we'll just... Um, there you go. And we'll just make this... like a wristband like that. I, I wanted it to be like, almost like a tide, almost like a bandage or something, but I didn't like that diagonal line and I don't like this diagonal line either. This is kind of a, an example also of a tangent. I'm going off on a tangent on these tangents, but the way that this one curved line leads directly into the other one. Like if I get rid of that one to see what, see what I'm saying? Like, If I undo that, see how that the line that I just put back in kind of goes directly into that other that other one, and it kind of makes the same shape, and they're not the same shape. So if I get rid of that one, it just makes that guy a little bit more dynamic. You know, I think that's better. Uh, you can do you can spend a lot of time kind of doing that sort of thing. And eventually you got to know when to stop. So I, I think this guy needs a little bit more here on on that jawline and maybe some like lines to make this look like its hair but overall we need to keep this nice and vacant so that people can color it in using a different uh, bunch of different materials. So cool, yeah. Connect that guy, connect this guy. Yeah, neat. All right, well, I think that's it, friends. Um, I'm really happy with how this came out. Let's zoom out so we get a better look at it. Again, last week was O is for oopsie, your car hit a mine. 
and this is for P is for pistols, stay armed all the time. Yeah, armed. <laughs> okay, anyway, that's enough of that nonsense. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I go back when this is all done. I go back and read all your comments. I'm sorry if I miss them uh, as it's happening. They're very small on my external monitor over here. And um, yeah, it, it's just how, how it rolls out for me. But I go back and I, I, I read them all and I really appreciate everybody showing up and, and interacting with each other and having a good time. And I'm, I'm glad you spend some of your valuable time watching me draw silly pictures. It's pretty cool, man. So uh, yeah, th thanks a lot, everybody. And we will see you back here next week. 8 p.m. on Monday for Q. And I think the Q is going to be quick. The alternative is dead, right? Because you got to be quick in the after or in the in the post-apocalyptic area. So um, we'll figure out. Again, I always say something and then I usually change my mind throughout the week. But for now, it's going to stand as quick. Uh, the alternative is dead. And then the next letter will rhyme with dead. You know how this thing works. All right. Uh, so... Go drink the paintwater.com forward slash ABCs to download all of the previous uh, coloring pages and this guy here maybe in a couple days. And uh, yeah, if you get on my newsletter, I just went out today and yeah, it's a cool way to keep in touch. But anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, have a happy Monday and uh, 